piece did you do on the, um, what about what, what, what on the right away? This is our goat herds, our weed-eating goats. Um, as you see, we, they're herded by an actual herder, so it's not just uh, untargeted grazing, it's actually targeted grazing where we're, we're actually focusing on the invasive plants. We also have four dogs with the herds that keep the predators away because uh, keeping the goats in good shape and safe are a high priority. And uh, as you see, this site itself has been in years of non-use and it has a variety of invasive plants here. Some high priority, some not. Our big concern is that really tall plumeless thistle. Well, plumeless thistle is, um, it comes up on our, on our list um, as a high priority species. We had a very large site here and we actually had a containment line in it to try to keep it localized here. But now because the strategy of this park has changed, it's now um, a slow pitch baseball site. So it's getting such a high volume of traffic coming through here. We've raised the priority of this site because we just don't want to see this plumeless thistle being taken away from this site. So it is, uh, it's got big thorns that grow throughout. It's stiff. It produces weed-borne seeds, so it can spread quite, um, quite rapidly. And it's just, uh, this is one of those plants that it's, a, it's an actual physical barrier to, to recreation and, and land use. The idea is that it's not going to get rid of the plant, it's not like hand pulling, it is just, it's grazing, but it stunts the plant, it keeps them down, and now grazing at this time of year will make the plant rely on all its energy and its roots, so it's going to set up a new bolt. And if you do that enough time, the goal is to get it for at least three years using the goats, that the plant is going to be so suppressed and so, um, just wears out of energy and eventually just dies away. that. Uh, we would like to see whether or not they would eat it. Uh, often we will do that within a corral situation so that they can eat it and get used to it. And then what we will do is, is pull them into that area after we know that they will eat it. Mm -hmm. well, what we do is that uh, they are never alone. They, we always have riders and herders there that can actually pull, uh, push them off of anything that we want them not to target. If it's a target area, then we can pull them in and keep them in tight formation to be able to uh, eat what we want them to eat. Mm -hmm. Cool. So this is a great site where they've been already a couple times. So if we take a look over at the plumeless thistle here, we see that it's quite high still. But if you remember, it was over my head in some locations. So they start from the top down. And then when we look around, we'll see some that's much smaller as they've grazed it down. And then some that gets almost right down to the ground. And that's how this works, is that they get, they go through in sort of a cycle and they repeatedly graze the same area and they'll just work it top down. So and this plumus thistle has been grazed by the goats before, uh, several weeks ago. And if you can see, this is the reaction it does. It's gone into a bolting stage, it has new flowers. Chances are it's not going to set seed this um, season. And it's expelled a whole bunch of energy here. So if we can get the goats through again, all that energy is going to be gone now because it's already been spent in this plant. And this is why it's not a 10 day project or a 14 day project. This is something that we would like to, you know, when you're going to use a grazing technique, commit to a long term, at least three years so that we can repeatedly damage um, these plants and get all those energy stores out of their system. area. The goats have been through here several, several times. The entire herd of 440. And if you look, there's no compaction. It's still soft. It's still pliable. We're just not seeing that big trample effect, which we would have had, say it be 440 cows. Areas. We've worked in parks uh, where there's lots of people. We've worked right downtown in uh, uh, certain areas, our dogs are well trained, they do not uh, bother people at all. 
even other dogs. Um, they uh, aren't particularly spooky. If they did start to move, we are on horseback, so we can always gather them up very quickly. Hmm. public response to this has been amazing. Uh, it's just another tool in the toolbox, something different than herbicide, different than pulling. Uh, the kids love it, the adults love it, uh, it's eco-friendly. And then there's been some concerns that, you know, immediately you think of 400 goats and you think it's huge, but the actual land space that they take is small. And if you look, they're, they're light animals, they don't make a big impact on the soil. We see no compaction and in fact, when they've been using them in other areas, they've they found that they increase riparian um, quality. They get rid of the invasive plants, so they get rid of some of the things um, encroaching onto the streams and stuff. And they actually make it better for wildlife and for the riparian quality. So it's been excellent. Um, they are an excellent resource to use around water because they don't... Um, they don't cause compaction. They're not a big disturbance like hand pulling can be. They're not, we can't use chemicals. So it's just another tool in the toolbox that we're really excited to have come out.